How to make a coal-fired steam engine boiler plant, part 27. The boiler in steam at full working pressure. This is the proper steam test. This is something I put together quite a few years ago when I used to fly model aircraft. It's a power panel in a nice little wooden box with a battery underneath it. And it also has a fuel pump, and I'm going to use the fuel pump to pump some water into the boiler, and I'm plugging the blower into the 12 volt starter sockets. And everything seems to work well. A nice portable power pack, so I'm not reliant on mains. I can start the boiler anywhere I like. The blower's running quite sweetly. I'm not sure whether it's too fast at this stage. In this clip I'm connecting the water pipe to one of the inlet clacks on the boiler. And just a simple flick of a switch on the power panel means the boiler will start to fill up with water. I really don't know why I didn't do this ages ago, because I've had this power panel for a long time, and it seems to be very good at filling the boiler, like it used to be very good at pumping model aeroplane fuel into the fuel tank. As you can see, in no time at all, the gauge glass is nearly full. For this first proper steam test using the blower, I'm going to slow the blower down. These are some 15 ohm, 10 watt resistors, and I use them as dummy loads when I'm working on Hammond organs that have speaker systems in them, so that when I disconnect the internal speakers to use an external Leslie speaker, then I don't get a problem with the valve amplifier having an open circuit on the speaker output. And this gives an approximate resistance of 5 ohms, which is about right to slow the motor down. And the other good thing about using three resistors in parallel rather than one 5 ohm resistor means that the heat is dissipated much more evenly, so they don't get very hot at all. The blower's probably going to be okay without the resistors, but I thought I'd try this first. And to light the fire, I'm going to use charcoal. But this is a small boiler and the lumps are too big. So after making the pieces of charcoal into even smaller pieces of charcoal by using a hammer, I soaked the pieces in some white spirit. You can of course use paraffin, but I didn't have any of that. So once I poured the white spirit all over the charcoal, and I stirred it up a little bit with a stick, I did all of this in a food container, then I can put a lid on the resultant mixture. The food container with a lid is a very convenient way of storing this stuff. The small shovel that I bought from Blackgates, although it was fine for the job, it was a little bit too long for this boiler, it is a very small firebox, so I chopped a bit off. Then I reprofiled the end on the belt sander. And this is much better as I can rotate it in the firebox. In the middle of my front lawn, I have a picnic bench. And it never occurred to me to use this to test run model steam engines and boilers. So here we go. The first item that I need is a large bottle of water. And here it is in the middle of the bench. I'll just move it to one side and put the boiler in place. So I have charcoal soaked in white spirit. I have some coal. I have the boiler. And I have a hand pump connected to the boiler. And the blower is in the chimney ready to be plugged into the 12 volt supply when it's required. And it's a lovely day. So here we go. I start off by opening the fire hole door and feeding in some charcoal soaked in white spirit. And as you can see in this clip, I'm putting a generous amount of this charcoal into the firebox. It's very important that the entire grate is covered. I leave just one piece of charcoal sticking out of the fire hole door. I light that and quickly push it into the fire hole and simultaneously connect the blower. This is very important because if you don't immediately connect the blower, all the fire will come out of the fire hole and burn the front of the boiler and possibly your fingers. So initially, leave the fire hole door open for a very short time to make sure that the charcoal is properly lit. And when you look at the fire, about two or three minutes later, it's glowing nicely. So it's time now to add some coal, but not too much. It looks like I'm putting a lot on here. But they are very small pieces. You just need enough to cover the top of the charcoal. If you put too much on, the whole thing's likely to go out. And the rule is, when you finish with the fire hole door, always shut it. Because if you leave it open, cold air rushes in through the fire hole and goes up the tubes and the boiler doesn't steam well. But this boiler's steaming very well indeed. And when the steam pressure in the boiler is at about 30 pounds per square inch, remove the electric blower and turn on the steam blower. But don't turn off the electric blower. Just let it sit on the bench or on the floor, just running so it's blowing cold air through itself and that will cool it down. But don't forget about it. You don't want to leave it running all the time, otherwise it will flatten the battery. 
This close-up shot of the pressure gauge shows that there is 40 pounds per square inch of steam pressure in the boiler now. I originally set the safety valve to blow off at 60 psi on compressed air. But now the boiler's in steam, the safety valve is behaving oddly, and this is quite normal, it's doing two things. One is, it's blowing off at too low a pressure, and the other one is lifting water. This is called priming, and it's very common on a new boiler. Inside the boiler are products of the silver soldering process. I'll just open the steam tap and make sure the pipes are all clear, and yes they are. As I was saying, this priming is due to impurities in the water. I don't advocate using distilled water, this is not the issue. The issue is, the impurities are there to start with, from the silver soldering process. And once this settles down, the safety valve will stop lifting water, and the priming will stop. Priming is a problem, because the safety valve is ejecting water from the boiler, not just excess steam. And of course, the water level drops in the boiler. So always be very, very careful. Make sure that you have a good water supply and the hand pump is working correctly. Don't forget, this is not a gas-fired boiler. You cannot just turn off the heat. With a steam boiler, particularly a coal-fired boiler, you always have to be doing something. You look at the fire, the fire's low, put some coal on. But then don't do anything else, because if you put water in at the same time, whilst the coal is lighting, and you know it's lighting because look at the smoke, but don't forget, if the steam blower's on, that is using steam. And that means the water level's going to drop, just with the blower running. And then the safety valve blows off, and it's priming, so it's lifting water. And if you're not careful, you can end up with no water in the boiler, and the boiler will be irreparably damaged. Now when I look at the fire, I see that it's really well lit. And if I look at the chimney, there's no smoke. There's a lot of heat coming out of the chimney, but no smoke. And to show what happens when I turn the blower up, you get a lot of ash coming up the chimney as well. And some of this ash is lit and it lands on your head, and it's very painful. Especially if your hair is not as thick as it once was. So the sequence of events is, is the fire okay? Yes. Right, put some water in. Is the fire okay? No. Put some coal on. Wait until the coal is all lit and the pressure starts to rise again. If you open the fire hole door and start shoveling coal into the boiler and at the same time pump a lot of water into the boiler the pressure will drop sharply and if this happens you have a problem and the worst case scenario is the fire may go out. But there's no such problem with this boiler it steams like a witch and as I say that I wonder where that saying came from steams like a witch is it something to do with when they used to burn witches at the stake did they steam? I don't know. Did the steam more than the normal heretic? I don't know that either. Maybe some people, when being burnt at the stake, just smouldered and went out. So why did witches steam, I wonder? This video is a condensed version of the steam test. I was actually in steam with this boiler for a couple of hours. So I've let the boiler go out now, and I'm removing the grate. It's very easy to pull out, and it doesn't look unduly distorted and it's had a lot of heat into it. It's bent slightly, but I would expect that. So for the moment, I think this will be okay. When boilers are new like this one, it's very important to blow them down after each run. And it's good to blow the boilers down anyway. Never do it from a high working pressure though. Let the pressure drop to about 30 PSI. Suddenly blowing down a boiler from a high pressure and high temperature is not good for the boiler's mechanical structure. And here's the blowdown in process. And as you can see, there's quite a jet of water firing out there. When blowing down a boiler, remember, the water is very hot. It's just above 100 degrees C usually at this stage. So please keep your fingers and any other body parts out of the way of this jet of water. This, of course, is the downside to coal firing. You have to do this. It's far easier on a boiler this size than it is on a full-size steam locomotive. I've done a little bit of that, and I was horrified when the smoke box door was opened, and the smoke box, after a day's running, was half full with ash, which all had to be shoveled out. Now the boiler's fully blown down, you can see the residue in the gauge glass. This will need cleaning out too. This has been a very successful steam test with no problems at all. This boiler is very good. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.